Hello again. This should be the last video for section 4.3 for calculus. Uh, we've talked about the chain rule. The last video was a tougher example where it was you had to use the product rule along with the chain rule inside of that to find the derivative of a function. Uh, just like in that one, the key first step is identifying what type of function you're dealing with. So when we look at this example that's here, we have a fraction. It's a function over another function. So really what we're looking at, our equation y, it is a over b. So to find the derivative of that, dy over dx, we got to do the quotient rule. So that's going to be derivative of the top times the bottom minus top times the derivative of the denominator all over denominator squared. Okay, so looking at our function, it's a fraction, so we need to do this quotient rule. But the numerator, this part right here, to find the derivative of that, that requires the chain rule because it's a composite function, all right? So, let me get rid of that thing. So here we go. dy over dx, finding the derivative. Once again, it is a fraction. Quotient rule is where we're starting. So the derivative of the numerator, this is where our chain rule comes into play. This is going to be 7 times the th inside function of 3x plus 2 to the 6th power multiplied by the derivative of the inside function, which is just 3. So that's just the a prime. Now we multiply by the denominator, b, x minus 1, minus the numerator, which is 3x plus 2 to the 7th power, multiplied by the derivative of the denominator, derivative of x minus 1 is just 1, all over the denominator squared. Why those parentheses came out like that, or why they are still coming out like that, huh? Okay, that's our quotient rule with a chain rule thrown in. From here, just like always, it just becomes some simplifying. And just like with that product rule example in the last video, the simplifying starts out with some factoring. Okay, so if we look at this numerator, just the numerator, it is two terms, okay, because of that subtraction. What we're looking at is some common factors in those two terms, which the only common factor in these two terms is 3x plus 2. Now, in the first term of the numerator, there are six of those factors of 3x plus 2. In the second term, there are seven of those factors of 3x plus 2. So the most we can take out of both is six of them. And that's the only common factor. You know, we got a factor of 1, but that doesn't do any good to factor it out. So this is all we can factor out what we are left with is, from this first term, we factored out all of those. So we got a 7 times 3 times an x minus 1. So that's 21 times x minus 1 minus, from the second term, we factored out 6 of those 3x plus 2s. That means there's one of them left over. And the factor of 1, we don't really need that. All of this is over x minus 1 quantity squared. Okay, let's raise the page up a little bit here, maybe. There we go. Okay, so from here, in this bracket, we can simplify some stuff. So this 3x plus 2 to the 6th power, that's just going to stay out there. Inside of this bracket, we got 21x minus 21, and we are subtracting 3x plus 2, so we're subtracting each term, minus 3x, minus 2. All of this is still over the x minus 1 quantity squared. These problems with the quotient rule and the chain rule, they tend to chew up some space on your paper. That's just how it goes. So, 3x plus 2 quantity to the 6th power. Inside of this, 21x minus 3x is an 18x. Negative 21 minus 2 is a minus 23, all over x minus 1 quantity squared. Okay, from here, there's really nothing left to do. We've got it so it's all factors in the numerator. Um, we would have, if we, we can't do any kind of foiling in the numerator because of this exponent of, to the 6th power. Uh, we would have to figure out what that is before we could do the multiplication of 
multiplying by 18x minus 23. I don't really want to do something to the sixth power and expand it all out, so we're not going to. We don't need to. Um, and there's no common factors, top or bottom. So this is our derivative, dy over dx. We are done with this problem. Now, with some of the problems, when you are doing the quotient rule with the chain rule in there, you will get some common factors, top and bottom, and some things will start to cancel out and clean up even more. So pay attention for that kind of thing. But again, the key step was that first one, identifying this is a fraction. So the main part of finding the derivative of that is this part up here, doing the quotient rule. Inside of that quotient rule, you had some chain rule. And then it was all just simplifying and factoring. That is all. Bye.